bad news. Bad news and good news. The bad news is this is our last episode. The good news is we're going to go out of a bang. How many do you yeah. have, like, real close friends? Seven, mate. Really? Yeah. Then, yeah. I said, like, two or three. I'm putting you in my seven. I made the seven. You didn't make my three. You're in the main. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. So entitled. He didn't want you to be his best didn't man. He's allowed, he didn't want you to be his yeah, best yeah. man. Yeah, probably doesn't think you're his best mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, yeah. Ross. Sort of, all right? Hello, everyone. I'm Adi Oladipo, and welcome to the men's room. Rory Jennings. Honoured to be here. What we need you to do is comment on this podcast. Yeah. Let our bosses know that you've enjoyed it and yes. we can then come back for a yeah. second series. Yeah, like say, where is it? It's a disgrace if it doesn't happen yeah. again. Like Just, really, yeah. Yeah, don't create, swear or anything. Create Just, a hashtag. Go mad. I've enjoyed doing these. You know, when you look back at the, the last few episodes, which one have you enjoyed the most? I think that, I mean, there's a few that have really resonated. I enjoyed our fatherhood conversation. Fantastic, wasn't it? I thought that was, that was special. Do you know, I thought Anxiety Josh was great. I thought yeah. he was a great guest. Mm. Uh, I watched that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was a great guest. Any yeah. standout for you? I think relationships and fatherhood were interesting. Mm. I think fatherhood was good because there were quite similarities between our situation and I think we just opened up. Yeah. Yeah. And that story, it's not funny, but the story about you in the pub and knowing the pub numbers, but then saying um, that your daughter won't be able to get you because she can call you on your mobile. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, something along yeah, those lines. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah, very funny. But no, they were they were some poignant moments, weren't they? Yeah. Some poignant, honest, mm. sort of heart-wrenching moments. So no, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Let's just hope that we get, uh, get commissioned for that second series. Indeed. Um, any ones that were of a surprise to you like wow like didn't expect that I mean the, there was a moment I think in, in a fairly recent one you know when we had Gideon in and we were talking about gang culture and mm. sort of violence on the streets of London and in all major cities there was a moment where he took, casually spoke about his experiences and he wasn't really accentuating too much and we were both talking to him and we were kind of probing him to say why why are you doing this Evan? You know, why are you so passionate about stopping knife crime and stopping this gang sort of violence and he didn't really say too much and we pushed again and we were like what, what, was there an epiphany why do you and then just casually when I was stabbed 16 times like, oh what? that's it mate mm. th that moment sort of the, the it was it was a sea change like no other wasn't it, it was a sort of metamorphosis yeah, like, in the studio you're like whoa you're what like, pause for a second yeah hang on a minute what have you what? just said yeah that, yeah, yeah. That, I remember you asked him you actually I remember the question you actually asked him were there any moments that made you change what you're doing. Mm. And it was like, well, not not really. And then I kind of pushed it. Anything happened? You stabbed 16 times. Yeah. I was like, that's yeah, so the moment, terrifying. Mate. That's the moment. Terrifying. Yeah. That was scary. So, so yeah, there there was there were certainly a few uh, a few things like that that really resonated and you know, I'm a proud Londoner, I lived in London my whole life and that took my breath away. Yeah. I'm never, like I feel like I've got quite a good understanding about the fabric of our community and the fabric of a city that I'm very proud of, but not that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? I mean, like, that, that 16 was, that as well? Was, yeah, that was a shocking one. That yeah. was a shocking one. And look, um, Gideon's doing so much good work in the community now. Long may it continue. But yeah, that was a surprise. For me, the one that stood out the most was that domestic abuse one. Yeah. That that surprised me a lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's not something that I've really been able to ever empathise with at all. You no, know, never, like, domestic, never, violent, I, domestic violence for me is very much a one-way street. Yeah, melt an, a an unacceptable one-way street mm. that is completely and utterly unacceptable if anyone does it that you know they're they are ostracised if not given a dig mm. I'd never heard of it the other way yeah. until that moment I'd never heard of it you yeah. know hearing hearing the conversation about how it materialised and the, the level of violence involved and the helplessness of the male victim you're yeah, not surprised as well the numbers remember we had that gentleman here that was from my, his name skips my mm. mind now and you're talking about the numbers the amount of men that report this yeah I was like, "What?" Yeah, surprised me. Yeah, it surprised uh, me. And also, I think I think you and I are probably. I, I, I imagine I'm being hugely judgmental here, but I imagine I imagine that a lot of our listeners would conform to our approach to 100%. society. Yeah. I think it's quite good for people like me and you to hear that because my natural approach, and I, I can totally concede that I'm probably wrong. I totally concede that I am seen as a bit of a boomer. You are. But I'd go, hold up, what? Your missus does what? Mm. What's up with you? That, that would be my that, approach. That's the approach. That would be my like approach. If, if, there was a, yeah, if I was out with a few friends yeah. in a bar and one of them said that, oh, my missus hits me, I'd be like, I'd laugh. 
Yeah, that would be the I'd thing. Say she, I'd say she did what? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Funny. I wouldn't even, yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I wouldn't take it serious. <laughs> no. And no. then, yeah. Which and is why that why... was so educated. Like, that was the most didactic one that we've had. Yeah. That was the one where you kind of, personally, I think, for, for the pair of us, I don't want to speak on your behalf here, but I think for, on the, for the pair of us, that was the one where we evolved which is what this is about. You know, we mm. are learning, we are growing as people. It's your Difficult responsibility, you know. The, the way that you see the world when you're 30 isn't the way you see the world when you're 40. Isn't the way mm. You're constantly growing, you're constantly evolving, you're constantly improving. And in that conversation, I would say that my approach to that situation has completely changed from before to after that podcast. It's strange though. I still think even now, even people listening to that podcast and look, hopefully what it does is allow people to kind of be brave and speak up. But I can still see the majority of men not coming out and saying that. that no. The majority of men will still think I'm not saying no, that I'm not my, my wife it. hits me or whatever. No, no, I, look, I can use my friends. I, this is this is wrong and this that this is why doing a podcast like the one that we did was so important. Mm. But I, I'm pretty sure that in my social circle, mm. if one of our mates said that that was happening, mm. I'd like to think that the support would come. I'd like to think that, but the initial reaction would be one of huge laughter. I still and don't know what. Do you know when you say support would come? I don't know how I'd handle it. If my mate came up to me, not if, I, if my mate came up to me and said that, I still would feel like I wouldn't know what to do. If I'm honest with you, because yeah. I, I, I would, I think I would that feel... we we now have an experience and we know that it's a serious issue. So I'd like to think that we would behave differently. But no, my mate, who's a London cabbie he's only going to laugh at that situation. And that's why people need to hear that podcast. That's mm. why we need to talk about it. And that's why it's such a valuable thing and such an such an honour that we can be part of that yeah. journey for society. Yeah, and credit to the gentleman that um, obviously spoke about his own situation as well. Um, one that was funny for me <laughs> was toxic masculinity. Because <laughs> you kind of were, I knew as soon as that conversation the started, was an idiot. I knew you, oh, here we go. The geezer was an idiot. <laughs> I don't care, the geezer was an idiot. I knew, I knew I'm you so were bored. Go I'm so bored of that chat. I'm, so, I'm like so bored of toxic masculinity. Am I allowed to say this? Yeah, I'm on. so bored of it. You can it. say whatever you want. I'm so bored of it. I'm, I'm sure that people listening to this will agree, apart from the ones who don't agree, who now hate me. Yeah. But I, I don't care about them either. But I'm so bored of that. I'm so bored about blaming white men for every problem in the world. Yeah. I'm so bored of being told that I am somehow not needed in my household. My household would flourish without me because the concepts of masculinity mm. are no longer needed well, in our home. Blame, like, shut up, you idiot. Did not blame the shootings in America? I tried it. Oh, yeah. Like, there is no way that... The defined roles of me, my wife, and, and my child, who has a role to play in our household and the functioning of our household, there is no way that it's interchanging roles. Mm. My responsibility is to provide and defend my family. Mm. And if you don't think that that's a real thing, if you don't believe that there is a defined role for a male in a, in a home, I think that's cool. You believe what you want. I won't tell you what to do, mm. but never talk to me because I hate you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, not, I hate you and I think you're so wrong. Yeah. You're, you're so wrong. If you honestly believe that... There is absolutely no, and this isn't about what, don't you think your wife could earn money then? Don't you think your wife could defend? Yes, she could, but not as well mm. and not as easy and it wouldn't come as naturally. If you can't see that there's differences between the male and female form and the male and female responsibility, I think you're insane. I genuinely think you're insane. Mm. This is where I get cancelled. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> but no, but this is where I feel like your opinion is so valid. And I think the majority, the majority of people have and back your opinion, but now won't say it because the world's a different place now. And if you say what you just said, then yes, you you do get cancelled. But it's, it's ridiculous. Like, my wife and I are such a good team mm. and it works being together and we pull in the well, same everyone direction. understanding their roles Everyone's the got, yeah. Like, mm. there are certain things that I can't do mm. that she's superior at. Loads, most things, in fact. Yeah. But there are certain, there are very specific roles that are mine are mine to fulfil and mine to fulfil only. So yeah, I don't I don't get that sort of view on society at all. Is there any subject and look, we've covered so many different ones and it's been such a broad range and wide range of subjects. Is there any one though that you'd like to sort of dive deep into? Like you know, like these podcasts are what forty five minutes mm. an hour long. Is there any one that you wish was like a couple of hours to to kind of ask more, find out more about? Yeah, I could certainly hear more from you about your situation with regard to your, you know, when we were talking about relationships and mm. your approach to relationships. 
I think you're quite a good case study of thank you. single. It's not necessarily a compliment. No, I know it isn't. Uh, could That's be an, could that, be an that thank you was um, a kind of no, a throwaway I mean, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could definitely be an insult. Oh, nice, um, nice. But I think that your, your story mm. today it's definitely more interesting than my, my my story is I'm a married man yeah. who is a doting husband and I, adore my, <laughs> and I adore my kid and that's and basically mine's not that and yours is not that but not that. you're kind of on the road to that and it's an it's an it's a meandering path that's filled with Jeopardy. eventful stories and colorful crazy yes, yeah and the yeah. history and you know you're you obviously mm. you had an you had a moment where you were nearly married and that didn't materialise. I think that is something that would be very interesting to explore in a deeper way, not necessarily directly to you. I think mm. your story is interesting here, but I think that there's a lot to understand and a lot to sort of embrace about the London single scene for people who are post 35. You know, for yeah. people, if you're single and you're 27, I don't really care because that's life. Yeah. But if you're single and you're 35, it's a slightly different journey. It's a slightly yeah, different story. I actually story. think now, like, when you are single at that age, people look at you different. It's weird. I remember it. Like, single in my 20s, mm. you know, people would look at you and, oh, you know. No, whatever. it was weird. Well, it was weird yeah. if you're, I remember, I remember I started a job when I was working on Big Brother. The fellow who came to work with us, who was my age, about 27, 28, mm. he was married. I was like, bro, what are you what talking are you about? You're, you're doing married. married. Yeah. I'm like, married to who? What happened? Yeah. Like, is she pregnant? Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah, like, yeah. Why, why are you married? Are you married? Yeah. yeah, what are you doing? That was weird. Whereas now I'm not the weird said, one. Weird isn't the right word. No, no, no. It's, weird is no. Mm, it's not the. But I know what you mean. Now I am that guy. Yeah, like, you're not. You're not Especially, settled down. Yeah, and and I think I think you're quite a good one to explore because face value. Perfect. It, yeah. Perfect. Well, well, I, would, I don't say know it. if I'd agree say with it. that. Perfect. But yeah, yeah, you have everything. You have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Got everything. Go you have me. a lot. You have. Yeah. Superficially, at least, <laughs> yeah. you have on a lot to surface. offer. Yeah, you yeah. have a lot to offer. Yeah. So, so I do think that that's an interesting one. What about you? Is there anything that you would like to delve deeper into? I think fatherhood was really good. Mm. Like, I think your stories about your dad were incredible, if I'm honest with you, and mm. so open. And it's almost like I wish there was part two. Like, you know, when it, a, yeah. a film ends, you're like, well, one second, twenty more minutes, please. Yeah. I wanted more from that story. Yeah, pop down to a pub in Labrick Grove and get him on. Get yeah, him on. honestly, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I because because of me seeing you and your character. And look, I know that you've been brought up by your mum and your gran, so there's a lot of ladies' influence. But I still see that cheeky chappy, mm. and I want I I, I want to see the oh, person that birthed that. Yeah, that's him. And it must be him. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, him. that's him. So I'd almost love to see you. 30 years old or whatever and see what it's like. Yeah, I mean, that was that was good. I mean, there've been some very, there've been some very interesting ones, hasn't there? Mm. Like when you think about the the topics that we've covered and the broad range of of issues that we've, Mate, we've covered faced a lot. head on. We've covered a lot. I mean, even the one, we've had ones about depression, male grooming, yeah. which I find you went down and got your hair cut from him. I liked him. Nice, He's a nice really guy. Nice, nice guy. Good looking dude, wasn't he as well? Yes. Oh. Yeah, until he... Uh, Until you saw his, his fingernails, <laughs> you weren't a fan. <laughs> what no, do they call that? Just, what do they call that thing again? Uh, it's called shellacking. Shellacking, that's yeah, it. Yeah. But do you know it works for him, doesn't it? <clears throat> because he's like, he's cool in like a very, very cool. true sense of the very word. Cool. Like, I, look, I was on me. his Instagram, and even his photos. You know when people take photos of them walking? Yeah. Like one foot just li yeah. like perfect. But you should see him in his true environment. So really you know, obviously, cool. he came to he came to our studio, which is your yeah. home territory. It's your mm. home game. My gaff. I went to his. Mm. So I went to Murdoch's in Covent Garden, had my hair cut, but to watch him, you know, gregarious, handsome, holding court. And he's like, all oh, West Ham tattoos and geezer and it's all mad, that. It? And he's mad. got painted nails. That was actually a very interesting that, moment for me. That. I saw it. That that was when you saw the West Ham mm. tattoo, you're like, hold on. Hold on. The two don't go together. No. Yeah. No, no, because... Yeah. Not at all, by the I've way. Done, I've done more than my fair share of... I mean, I've done more than my fair share of trips to West Ham, uh, both the new and the old stadium. But I've also done plenty of England away games, tournaments mm. and group games uh, to get to tournaments. And when you go away of England, like, I don't know, I went to, say I went to Macedonia in, when would that have been, 05, 06? I went to Macedonia, England won one nil. Peter Kraut scored a bicycle kick. That's mm. what I can remember. Mm. We powered up with these West Ham fans. Chelsea and West Ham. Well, up. yeah, me, well, I was with, I was with my two mates, QPR fans. We met in our hotel, we met these sort of West Ham fans, ended up going out for a drink with them. Wild, you know, like yeah, West Ham, yeah. West Ham tattoos, West, and West, England, West Ham fans, going yeah, away. wild, wild. They yeah. were trouble, like real trouble, yeah. and they had the West Ham tattoos. And and what I see as being synonymous with, if you've got the tattoo of the West Ham crest or the irons or whatever, if you've got the 
if you've got that tattoo, it's a statement, isn't it? Mm. It's a statement and it's an insight into your character and therefore your view of the world. 100%. So if I see somebody like that, and this is this is applicable to every club, every whatever. You, Anything. You can make a, an assumption. The assumption that you would make with regard to our friend who came in to talk about male grooming, the assumption that you would make... Prior to seeing the West Ham tattoo, so by the way. So wrong. So you're saying prior to seeing the West Ham tattoo. Or even or, or, or the other way. So yeah. you see the West Ham tattoo and you go, right, I know how this geezer views the world. I know where this geezer sits politically. I know where this geezer sits on virtually everything. Mm. And then you see the fingernails. You're like, hang on, that's not the same person. <laughs> yeah. what? It's not the same person, is it? Yeah. It's not the same yeah. person. Yeah. Is it, yeah, it's, actually quite a good, it's actually a very good one for me. You know, again, you know what we were saying before yeah. about learning and growing and... Mm becoming a better, more rounded, more educated yeah, person. Yeah. That was a good one for me. Like, yeah, maybe, just maybe seeing that, him, meeting that's him. That's him. Yeah. Right? That's him. But yeah, he, he was great. I need to go down and get my shape up and my beard oil. Mate, he'd, he'd love your beard because yeah. you know you know when I went to that place. He says he can carve it, he said. Yeah, there was yeah. a... Obviously, I'm I'm very, very much a clean shaven kind of bloke, which I would maintain now is... Got a bit of stubble today. Is the, today I didn't have a shave today. I left, left the house early. But, mm. but that's only through laziness, not yeah. through design. Okay. And uh, you're not trying to join the beard gang. Never. Okay. Never. You think you look quite good for beard? No, it's not. It's not for me. Like, like we established on that. For me, having a shave is part of getting dressed. You're so 1920s. You getting know that. Getting dressed. If you you're get dressed, so old. If you school. go out. If it'd be God, like if, you watch Peaky Blinders, don't you? If I went out without my shoes on, that'd be mm. weird, wouldn't it? It's the same. Go out. It's the same. It's, it's completely the same. Right. Go, like, have a shave is part of being. So you're basically saying, Ada, you're scruffy. But when I no, I appreciate it, that that's not the world now. Yeah. I appreciate that's not the world. Yeah. Everybody's got a beard. Yeah. But when I went to to see him in Covent Garden, there was an element of disappointment that I wasn't because it was very beardy. It like the place. I mean, mm. you know, they were ready to. It's all beard oils and combs for your beard, and that's it, not you, is it? No, mate. Short back and sides. Keep it long on top. Hope for the best after that. That's right. Interesting. Uh, we've had so many comments come in. From YouTube, thank you so much. I'm going to read a couple about uh, this one on relationships. Um, I'm far from being a ladies' man; quite the opposite, actually. But from my experience, face-to-face approach is better in regards um, to getting dates and numbers. Relying solely on dating apps is a coward's way out, akin to a footballer avoiding a penalty during a shootout. The rejections <laughs> will help strengthen your character, and you will benefit in the long run. Yeah, I yes, he's correct. I, actually, I completely I, agree. I agree with but that, but, but he's I agree, you agree, he agrees, but we're probably the only three in the world that do. You know it's got to the stage now where I think I I hope I'm wrong, mm. but I think that it's now weirder to meet someone in a pub than online. Like when I was young, if you met someone online, mm. like I remember when, when I was at university, people would be on a website called Plenty of Fish. If, really? if people went on that, exist. I'd go, mate, what are you doing? Mm. What are you doing? Yeah. Go to the pub full of women. People there. yeah, but rejection's quite a big thing. Yeah, but it's life, isn't it? Like, if you if you can't handle rejection in terms of, like, well, life... How many, how many things can you take, though? No, how much rejection can yeah, you take? but you have to be resilient. Mm. Life is a life is one life is one massive acceptance mm. and also one massive rejection. But people will see, like, you know what? It's easy on the photo app, isn't it? Just, no, reject, quickly, reject, Yeah, but you should still on, get rejected, quickly. though. You yeah, just meet like, in real it life. Doesn't, it doesn't hurt, does it? It's just bang, no, bang. No, but you on. could still get rejected when you meet. Oh, yes, you are correct. Because you're almost setting yourself up. You know what You know what these, these uh, people are like now? Mad filters and airbrushing. Everyone, every every girl on there looks like Mate, Kim Kardashian. It's, it's frightening. I, I don't know what Kim Kardashian looks like, but apparently she's the pinnacle of oh, female. I wouldn't recognise her had, on the tube, mate. She could have been on my tube on the way here. I wouldn't have a poster of her, stop lying. But I think... Being rejected and, and you know, if you've if you've asked a girl out or whatever, I think that being rejected is part of life and it's a part of growth and yeah. it's part of experience. Yeah, agreed. Because it's gonna set you up. You're at some point in your life you're gonna go for a job and you're not gonna get it. Yeah. At some point in your life you're gonna be rejected like life that, isn't yeah, acceptance it's acceptance. It's the norm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do think we're in a generation of that doesn't work. That's not the norm. Yeah. If I reject, it's the end of the world. Yeah, and, and well, not... well, you're not allowed. No. Like, there's, there's kind of a movement against comp- competition. Mm. Like, you're not allowed to. You know, there's no winners and losers. We all t- like, even I when I take my kids to football. Stand that do you know? Do you know what they did? I can't stand. Well, everyone gets a medal. Everyone gets a. Ki- everyone gets a sticker. What? I, like, she's three, so I'm tolerating it. Ban at the moment. it. Ban no, it at, now. At three, she I can un- live she has with to it. understand. At three, I can Early. live with it. In fairness, she won the race. So. But yeah. you didn't win the father's race. But, did you? <laughs> I do, mate. Do you know? You're not fast for me. I mate, raced you. I raced you. Addy, I raced you with a bad back and bad knees. Addy, compared to, do you know me and you compared yeah. to the average? You know when I go to parent things. Oh yeah, they're a bit. Bro, I'm the, f- yeah, I'm the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the king. They're all double fat and that. Yeah. Like they're dads, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I'm like you and I, a parents thing. 
would we do some yeah, do some business. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, another one uh, about relationship. This is from Yella Dean. Can't believe you did a Spursy and bottled a wedding. <laughs> yeah, love the honesty. This was a good podcast. Yeah, you know, I I did. Well, I didn't bottle the wedding. I Look, just realized it's quite brave what you did. I yeah. mean, it's it's mental, but it's brave. Yeah, at the time it was very scary. I didn't thing- think of it as brave. I did think of it as. You've bottled it. It depends what way you look at it, because I think that there is a world where the braver thing to do is to to know that to, you to not do not the wedding. Do, yeah, to, like it's the cowardly thing to do would be the just turn up and say I do and and just hope for the best. Yeah, hope for the best. Yeah, I decided that wasn't going to be the case, and you know now looking back years to come, I definitely oh, handled it wrong. But I'm yeah. But there's no right way to handle that. Like there isn't, there isn't like a no, manual. No, 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 I went, yeah, there's no right way, but if there's the you, wrong you way. You still did it wrong, I right. did it the wrong way. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> like not, um, not answering the door to her mum. What, you're just sitting in the house like that? Shh. Shitting myself. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally, like, <laughs> this is so I don't stupid. know what you do in that situation. Like, literally, like, I could, I felt like I could sense her mum coming to the door. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Like a horror movie. You, you know she them was horror there. movies where yeah, like, like like in Jurassic Park. You know when the water's moving and the know. kids sitting in the and thing. In the I kitchen. was like, I am not answering this door. <laughs> I am. There's no way. And what's she doing? Just banging on there, shouting through the letterbox. Kick the door down, nearly. Really? I, I would do the same. I'm thinking about it now. If a dude was with my daughter for seven, eight, nine, ten years and got married, and then the dude just said, "Don't fancy it." I'm coming for his head. I'm, I'm finding him. I'm coming for his head. So I don't blame her whatsoever. I should have dealt with it. Should have dealt with it better. Yeah. No, there's no easy way though. Like, whatever you did was probably the right move and simultaneously. I went probably cold the wrong turkey. Move. You know, like like literally, like a drug addict. That's literally just. Do you know nothing. what? Do you know what you should have probably done? Go on. Just like book yourself a flight. Don't tell anyone where. Just go. Yeah. Just like get out. Look, I'm at terminal. I was, I was five, actually in I'm London off. for about a month, and I went to South Africa to work. Yeah. 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 Thinking it was by the time I get back, it's all going to be nice and no. Yeah, have an identity change. Just, what about just, it? Just leave. I'm gone. I don't Go, exist Cuba, anymore. Yeah, thirty years old again. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, different yeah, yeah. passport. Yeah. Everything works. <laughs> all right, this one's on fatherhood. This is from Craig Taylor. Excellent vid, which I can really relate to. My dad left when I was six months old, leaving my mum and me alone in London. I've never had a father figure in life, and as you say, honestly, believe it drives me, and it's not a weakness in any way. Being raised by women, as you have made me softer in the right ways. I served in the military. I went all over the world and now I'm settled down with an amazing wife and an incredible little girl. Is this you writing this? <laughs> Apart from the military. Imagine being in the military. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the absence of a father figure drives me to be better, to be what I never had for my daughter and be what my mum never had for my wife. While I appreciate it can break you, having no father figure, it can also make you if you have the right support. Yeah. Powerful. Powerful from Craig Taylor there. Powerful. Mm. Uh, another one here from um, Wallace P. Games. My father was pretty useless and I saw him from the age of 12. Uh, 19 years later, he dies and I cried once, but I couldn't explain why. Possibly in in hindsight, it may have been due to the chance of asking questions and getting answers. If anyone reading this has been through similar and you have a chance to ask questions, please do it. It's funny because I remember you asked me this. Mm. I think we both asked each other and you said, if your dad was around now and I was like, yeah, I'll take him to everything. Yeah. Because my dad was the reason... I love sport. Yeah, he'd be at the boxing with you and all bit that. Of boxing. doing the big things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. be at the boxing, you know. Yeah, um, sad. Yeah. yeah. Never, never yeah. think like that. Never listen to anything like that. Mm. Do you know Luther Vandross song? Oh, here we go. Dance with my father. By the way, he does. Oh, God. God powerful. That made you cry that. That, yeah. Oh. Don't, don't listen to that anytime. Don't. That song is so yeah. beautiful, but it's so powerful. But really powerful. Yeah. Never listen to that and then read that because you'll definitely cry. Yeah. Why do people do that? Even when people have like bad things in relationships, they put on love music. It's, like, it's the wrong yeah, thing yeah, to do. Don't do that. Put on Wiley or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Stormzy. Yeah, last thing in the world Stormzy you need now Tupac. is Celine well, Dion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he don't <laughs> want Celine yeah. Dion. You know what one we did do, which was very interesting, you got a lot of stick about this, growing old, because you were talking about guys in their 40s with protein shakes trying yeah. to get six packs, and you like, stop it. Well, and people came at you. Yeah, but my yeah. issue isn't necessarily that. Take pride in it. I go to, like, I do my best, right? You go, Jim. I do my best. Is it because you can't get a six pack? No, it's bec- what it's because, it, it, I think I phrased it poorly. My attack wasn't at them. Mm. My attack was more, grow old gracefully. Yeah. That's what it, it was more a- What, it, going it, gym's not what you- No, <laughs> there's a line though, isn't there? No. So don't try and look 20. Don't dress 20. Don't have a haircut of a 20 year old. Don't behave like a twenty year old. Don't go to Zanti. Don't like my attack was more forty year old, like Wayne forty Lineker. year old, yeah, Wayne forty Lineker. year olds in skinny jeans with six packs. It was more that rather than, of course, take pride in yourself. Of course, be healthy. Of course, go.
go to the gym and make sure that you're, you're not, regimented you're with what you eat. You're such an old soul, ain't you? Like, you are quite an old soul. Quite traditional, yeah. Yeah. I'm quite traditional. Proper. I'm quite yeah. traditional. Do you open but the door? Do you open the car door for your missus? Not the car door, but I'd hold a door open for anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't say thank you, woe betide, my reaction. Yes, honestly. Yes. Woe betide, even in the office. Yeah. If I hold the door open for you and you walk through it and you don't I say thank you. I curse them in my head. I say you. I, 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 I go, curse. you're welcome. I do that as you're well. You're welcome. I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, I get, uh, I get I'm, I'm furious. But what I don't like is, you know, you know, there are certain brands out there that are clearly aimed at younger people. Mm. When I see older people in that. It's a bit. Yeah, or the or the other thing I find so vulgar, you know, the mad designer gear. You know, when somebody is just like in ridiculous, like what, a, the old, a forty-five, the old stuff. a forty-five, but, but, but yeah, I mean, but that, no, no, that, she, that kind what, of thing, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, the the Burberry, well, it's just all branded out, like just keep it, yeah, keep it cool. With all a that D something. squared gear and that, oh, you know, when you're you're, your you're forty-six and you're wearing those shoes with the, you know, those trainers with the massive platforms, mm. it's like. What are you doing, mate? What like what are you doing? But, but what, they still want to remain young. What's the yeah, problem with that? But that's that's my they're the people okay. I have issue with. They're, Grow yeah. old gracefully. Be dress your age, not your shoe size. Um, I was gonna. Um, would you do anything cosmetic? I mean, I use moisturizer. Yeah. I, I, I push it on that front. I think mm. you know when we were talking about um, our beauty regimes, my ablutions. I would. I, I put moisturizer on every day. I have a haircut. Every other month, I have a bit of under eye cream now and yeah. again. But I would. When you say cosmetic, do you mean knives? Yes. No, of course no, okay, not. Okay. Of course not. I wouldn't would you do let that. Your missus? I wouldn't stop her. I wouldn't no. want her to. Yeah. I would. I, my counsel would be don't. <laughs> yeah. But it's her body, you know. Like if she decided. <laughs> my it, counsel would be. My don't. counsel would be don't. Obviously, don't. I'm ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But it just my 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 issue, and I did phrase it wrong in that because I think. 100% go to the gym, 100% take pride and 100% be healthy. Just don't be a moron. Don't dress like a 20 year old. Don't go to 20 year old nightclubs. Yeah. Don't, like th It's that same kind of principle. If you Have you ever ended up in, you know those those West End nightclubs? Mm -hmm. Like Tramp or yeah. wherever. Yeah. Each, it, I find it so off-putting. Like oh, I, My mate's a member, so I end up going for dinner, me, Victoria and my mate and his wife. And his wife. Go for dinner in there, and there's a nightclub. We pop down for a cocktail occasionally. The four of us. There'll be a sixty-year-old fellow with a twenty-two-year-old girl. Mm. What are you doing, mate? He's like, living. He's living life. I've talked about. Do you think? Absolutely. You think if I get to sixty, I want a sixty-five-year-old with next to me? Yes. No. No. We're getting a little bit of an insight into <laughs> the single, into <laughs> why the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're making a little yeah. bit more. So the jigsaw is yeah, coming yeah, it's together. Coming together yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. All right, a couple more uh, comments. This is from Wade Ashley Feist says, I'm 24 and I feel about 54. Jeez, Wade. Um, I feel very lost these days. Obviously, football is massive in my life. Family and football is everything to me. I haven't had friends or people to meet for a decade. I live a recluse lifestyle. I get the feeling like I'm on my way out. All right, look, Wade, you're not on your way out at all the funny thing is I 100% feel like a recluse most times as well I think we all go through it I've definitely gone through it um, you just gotta open up just gotta open up and let people in it's difficult to mm. by the way because you feel people are quite judgmental but you've almost just gotta be yourself open up let people in and then you'll realise that there's a lot of people Wait, out the, there like you the nature of that message I think that that could almost be more needs to speak to somebody and, and we'll see if we can reach out as well actually we'll see if we can reach out and put Wade in touch with people but again with all these things I've always said that my DMs are open for conversations I'm always happy to have a conversation I actually do it on my own personal YouTube channel where I phone people regularly and just have conversations and you'll be surprised how it makes their mm. it's weird because you know you just feel like your own your, your own little person and then when I call them like what Ade no, no way. way. Unbelievable. Mom, Do you Ade's <laughs> on the blow. You ain't going to believe this. Yeah. Oh, mate, that's and amazing. And I reach out and we have conversations, even just for five minutes. Yeah, Obviously, I can't reach so out to a everyone. Lovely, it's a lovely So uh, we'll see gesture. if we can get in touch with Way because I think we we need to. Uh, Shanique says, I can relate to both of you. When I reached 40, all my bones creaked and I now hate younger people. <laughs> now, every year on my birthday, something else happens. Nose, ear, doing the sound every time you sit or stand, just turning around and getting a pain of some sort. I've just turned 46 and have to take naps in the afternoon now. Jeez. Yeah. It's, it's life. Good. I've yeah, got wisdom tooth life. issue. Mm. You know, you know, my knee cracks. I never had bit. anything. Oh, my, my ankle. Guarantee every, every step I take, every move every I make, make 
every <laughs> single day that that will, yeah. that will creak. Yeah, yeah I mean, and it's but it is life, isn't it? Yeah. And and the point is embracing it, embracing it, and don't look forward, don't look back. Just no, but, embrace no, every stage of life. It's difficult to embrace because no one tells you when you get to forty, this is going to start to happen. No, I don't think it's a surprise though. I mean, we've all got older relatives and seen older people yeah. the thing that i think happens particularly for young people and i was definitely guilty of this i kind of thought well not me mm. i'll be all right yeah i, well, I won't but mm. you know it's 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 a part of it but i do think sort of some very good advice that i was given mm. when when uh my daughter was born when you go for, when you have the christening you have to go and like have some conversations with the priest yeah and we had a baby at the time and he said to us look don't don't think about, like, just embrace the now with your daughter. So don't kind of look longingly back. And I think parents often do that. Parents often go, oh, they were so cute. I miss them. They're growing up so fast. Mm. And you're like, don't hanker for the past. Equally, when you're in a moment, don't think of the future. Try and get out of this particular period because it's difficult. Mm. Each period of life will come with its joys and its tribulations. But just try and enjoy each stage. Because it does pass. Very quickly. And then you'll be looking back on this stage, wishing, you know, when you're 50, you'll start wondering yeah. and hankering back to when you're 40. There is that, isn't it? There is that, I know it's difficult to do for everyone, but there is that enjoy today because tomorrow is not promised mm. type thing. Carpe this diem, my Carpe friend. Carpe this diem. Indeed it is. Uh, friendships was another one that we did, which was interesting. Yeah, it's good. And I asked you, I think at the time, like your circle of friends, I can't remember the answer, but I said, how many do you yeah. have like real close friends? What was yeah, it? Seven, remember? I think. Really? Yeah. Like, like real close. I'd say seven, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I said like two or three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friendships. But I don't know how wide. One. Like, I'm putting you in my seven. I made the seven. Yeah, you're you in the seven. You're in the magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're in the But now I've got four. I've got four six, now. I've got four. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ross Edwards sent one in on friendships. He said, My best mate didn't ask me to be his best man at his wedding, so I walked away from his world. Concentrate on myself and my daughter. That's a bit, mate. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, Ross. I'm sorry. Ross, you, you might have been. He, he might have been best mates, Mate, but he might not have looked at you know what? That. As a man who's got married, right, yeah. listen, never take anything wedding to mean anything. It's There's so many layers. It's so difficult. If you only get an evening invite, it's not because of this. It's because her dad needs to invite his cousin, who he hasn't spoken to for 20 years because it's political in the yeah. family, yeah. and therefore you can't come. Whenever anyone's getting married, do you know what I'll always say to him? I'm like, look, if numbers are ever an issue, no drama. I get it. It's so difficult. Not being asked to not being asked to be his best man. Yeah. Uh, come on, get yeah. over yourself. Yeah. So entitled, <laughs> Ross. So entitled, like yeah, yeah. 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 Didn't want you to be his best didn't man. He's allowed. He didn't want you to be his yeah, best yeah. man. Yeah. Probably doesn't think you're his best mate. Ross. Sort of. All right. Uh, Leslie Lewis Walker said he enjoyed this. This is on friendships. It is so subjective, Ade. I do think the whole birthday thing is understandable. You can't, you cannot not reply and then expect people to be okay with that. Oh, that's me with my Oh, yeah, because your friend got annoyed. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still not speaking. Mm. Um, every relationship takes effort. Love you guys. Thank you. Um, if you love us, Leslie, feel free to leave a comment and say continue. Continue, yeah. Continue we need this. series two. We need series it's two. Apl this is applicable to everyone. Even, yeah. the, even Ross, who we just mocked. Yeah, Ross, sorry. Yeah, sorry, take, bro. I take it back, Ross. <laughs> yeah. What I meant yeah, was season two. great comment. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the, and I'm guessing this is the same as you, most of the comments and sort of messages I've got have been like, what an amazing podcast. Mm. Um, you helped me with my mental health, my anxiety. You know, I think because we were very, very open, but um, I think most of them was just, you know, keep going, great stuff. And I think because of who we are in this media world, I think maybe people look at us slightly different. And then when we opened up and people realized, well, you know, we're only human beings, we have problems as well. We're completely different in terms of your married wife, mm. kid, mansion add a <laughs> one bedroom flat single no no no, no. <laughs> so uh, private square educated i found that as well and this, which surprised didn't surprise i knew you were quite posh um, <laughs> so i think people want to hear our stories and i think we've been honest and given them yeah which I is think, what this uh, is all about for me yeah the, the openness beginning. is important because i think if we if we expect people to be open with us when they comment if we want people to empathize and listen to this and value this podcast you can't do it from behind a facade no. you have to be completely you have to be all in cards on the table yeah. and you also have to be ready for the flack that will come with that mm. like me calling our first guest an idiot you have to be Can't ready to be, you have to be an idiot. you have to be ready for the flack that comes with that and yeah. i and i certainly am no 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 it's been I, i've enjoyed it and i really hope that we do uh continue just because 
I just feel like these conversations are important. Mm. I, and I feel like men, men are the worst at this. Like, you know, for a man, it's very rare that they open up, right? It's just almost like, and sometimes, by the way, I do think there's, there is a world that still exists where it's no roll up your sleeves and get on with it. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's no, true as well. At all. I you think should that's do perfect. that. Yeah. You should do, 90, 95% of problems should be that. Yeah. But then there is a 5% that needs to be explored. But a lot of people should pull themselves together and get on with it and work a bit harder. Mm. That's also allowed to say. Yeah. Like that is also valid advice. But there is, there is, weird, there is another percentage that need a bit of care, need a bit 100%. of love. 100%. And we're trying to find the happy medium. Yeah, that's about. what we're trying to find. Those 5% as mm. well, they're almost hidden yeah. away and don't want to talk and don't want to say anything and bring them out yeah. into the light. Exactly. And I think we've done it so far. Uh, Rory, it's been an this. honour. Thank you for having me. It's been an honour indeed. Um, guys, that's it for Series 1. Um, leave a comment below this video and say how much you want it back. But no, I've enjoyed doing this with Rory. Thank you so much to all our guests. I can't list them all because far too many, but all of them were fantastic. A few do spring to mind. Anxiety Josh springs to mind. Gideon definitely springs to mind as well. What's Smiley the, the Barber. Is, what, what's his name? That's his name on Instagram, Smiley the Smiley Barber. Smiley the Barber. Yeah. Smiley the Barber, I'll be seeing you soon as well. Make sure... Look, guys, download this podcast wherever you download your podcast from. Again, if you are one of those people that like to watch a podcast, just head over to TalkSports YouTube channel and you will find us there as well. For myself and from my sidekick, <laughs> Mr. Rory Jennings, before he gets a word in, goodbye. 